You see, this is part of a problem we have, that governors are creating impressions out there that we are friends. We are not friends. We also just see when Mbakasi happened, we heard that he was throwing a bash in South Africa. Therefore, he's, I don't know how, how many years he's done. At a certain age, you must stop celebrating. Shere has also a limit. I think uh, this cabinet secretary is in the habit of not attending to these meetings. Last year, I remember the whole of last year, we sent several letters of inviting the cabinet secretary. And not only the cabinet secretaries, even his other state departments um, or other corporate officers are also following on the same bad behavior. We know EPRA, Kipto. Kipto has never attended any meeting in this uh, committee. So I don't think we should. This is a very, very, very emotive issue. It's a very urgent matter that required, you know, the cabinet secretary to attend. If a president of a country like Tanzania can cut short a trip to a foreign country because of something that has happened, a tragedy that has happened in her country, why can this cabinet secretary come in here? You know, it's about time that we become parliamentary and really delink ourselves completely from any relations with the executive and apply Article 125 and compel that witness to appear. You know, our parliamentary powers and privileges are quite clear, but I think it's quite seldom that we use them to the latter. So, Mr. Chairman, this habit of the cabinet secretary not appearing is becoming really, really annoying. So my view is very clear, that we don't waste our time. We come here. Today we sought permission from the speaker because of the urgency of this matter. Right now, our colleagues are in chambers dealing with other issues. But we sought permission so that we can be able to attend to this meeting. We have the area MP coming here because of the urgency on this matter. Mr. Chairman, I don't think you should take this thing lightly. You know, before you walked in, the substantive chair, I had raised a concern that last year we invited the cabinet secretary, my friend David Stirchir, twice. He didn't appear. We only met him casually in a meeting, I think, at the airport. So, and another meeting which was organized by Kenya Power and Lighting. So really, if, if, for, if we are going to be able to make any progress in this committee, you know, you just came from the liaison meeting where you raised concern that committees are not working. You know, committees are not working because cabinet secretaries are not responding to invitations. So my take is this, you know, we invoke Section 19 of the Public um, of the Parliamentary Powers and Privileges Act. We summon the Cabinet Secretary to come in because we can no longer send an invitation. You know, this is a very urgent matter. You know, people have died. And we are here as ombudspersons of the people. So my take is very clear that that letter, and this business, uh, this habit of getting letters a day before the meeting is actually becoming really, really annoying. So, Mr. Chairman, my position on this matter is very clear, that we reject the letter and we actually summon the cabinet secretary to appear. Even today, we have done that in other committees. Your vice chair sits with me in another committee and there was a day we received a letter from cabinet secretary in Jugunandongo. We rejected the letter, the chairperson called him, and we waited until 6.30 p.m. when he appeared in that committee. So nothing stops us from doing the same thing. So I'd like to beseech you, for us to make any progress, for us to be able to at least respond to the need of the people of Embakasi, is for us to demand that. I thank you, Mr. Chairman. Good. Uh, thank you, uh, Chair. Garibu uh, Chair. So, Farouk, in expressing the disappointment this morning that uh, we continue to be treated as a committee with absolute contempt from members of the executive, when urgent matters touching on the lives and livelihoods of the people of this republic, and specifically the people of Nairobi, that a cabinet secretary would write to this committee only hours before the meeting to tell us that he has traveled. It's not as if Davis Churchill traveled yesterday. Mr. Chairman, I want us to put our foot down, because it might appear like they are dis, uh, displaying contempt for this committee, but it's actually uh, displaying of contempt for the people of Kenya. 
for the people of Nairobi and by extension the people of Embakasi East. Mr. Chairman, we wanted to know as a matter of urgency if indeed there exist other facilities similar to the one that brought this disaster in Embakasi East in areas in Nairobi because we have been receiving uh, information from members of the public that they can see similar installations uh, from outside their windows. And if another tragedy like this happens in Nairobi, I don't think uh, we will be able to fathom uh, the impact it will have on the, on the people of Nairobi. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I can see the letter that we wrote uh, to the Cabinet Secretary of uh, Energy was also sent to uh, the EPRA CEO, uh, David Kipto, who we have not heard about uh, in terms of his whereabouts. Uh, is it to say, does that letter say that they have traveled together with the CS of Energy, or where is David Kipto? Where is the management of the National uh, Environmental Management Agency? Where are they? Where is the city county of Nairobi? All of these people who are involved in uh, this negligence should be appearing before this committee today. If the cabinet secretary can show us this contempt, I think we as a, a committee should meet him halfway, the way that uh, Senator Olekina has uh, uh, suggested. We should issue someone so that he appears uh, before this committee uh, as a matter of urgency. Uh, I don't know uh, what, what sort of uh, attitude uh, this, this, this points to, uh, because this is a dangerous thing we're talking about. We have already lost lives. As we speak, uh, Mr. Chairman, uh, the member of parliament for Embakasi East tells me they are yet to even bury some of those victims. The government has not pronounced itself on who's going to pay the bills of those who are attended to at the national facilities, including Kenyatta National Hospital. There are people who are still in hospital. And uh, uh, they are seeking answers from the area of member of parliament. He was hoping that he would hear from the CS for Energy himself. No national government representative has spoken to the people of Embakasi East, except the visit by the deputy president where he promised some things that Babu confirms again. Those things have not been delivered to the people. Please, this is not about us seated here. This is not about this committee. The people of Nairobi want these answers, and they want these answers urgently. Unfortunately for you, members of this committee, we are the ones who host you here in Nairobi. Mr. Chairman, it is actually possible that where you live, this danger lives with you. So it is not just about the poor people in, 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 in Mradi and in other informal settlements. It, it is actually possible that where we host you here in this city, you are living with this danger. So it is urgent for every person in this country. I saw even C.S. Moses Kuria posting on uh, social media that he could see uh, one of his uh, facilities from outside his premises in Thika. So, Mr. Chairman, this is not a matter that can wait. I think as a committee, we put our foot down. We were prepared to get these answers from the CS, from the EPRA CEO, from the county government of Nairobi. I'm not sure whether my governor is in the country either, because he's also one of those who's always outside the country. I'm not sure where he is, but they should at least communicate and tell us where they are. This is absolute contempt, Mr. Chair. I would propose that we move in the terms pronounced by Senator Olekina and summon all these people to appear before this committee as soon as possible, including tomorrow. We are here. My Chair, Chair number one, uh, I am Babu Oino, member for Mbakasi's constituency, where the said tragedy took place. Chair, I came here in the capacity of a member of parliament representing the great people of Mbakasi East constituency. And Chair, such a tragedy can befall any member of parliament. Chair, we were elected to represent the interest of our people. Today, it is about Mbakasi East constituency. Tomorrow, we'll hear about another constituency. And therefore, Chair, the people who passed on in Mbakasi East constituency, the numbers have gone to around 10. The people who are injured, Chair, are over 300 in number with serious bans. And we know, Chair, that with the exposure of these bans, our people risk getting infections and losing water through dehydration. And we may end up losing more lives. Chair, I came here to get answers from the Cabinet Secretary irrespective of our political parties. Because when we are here, we are representing the interest of Kenyans. And Chair, it is an insult under the doctrine of separation of powers, checks and balances, for a cabinet secretary not to obey 
the orders, the summons, the invitation given by this honorable senate. And it is even a greater insult to you as the chair that if the cabinet secretary cannot listen to you as the chair, what about other members of parliament? What about other Kenyans? And therefore, chair, the cabinet secretary for energy, Mr. David Chirchir, has proven to be an unreliable witness who, on the witness stand, should be impeached. When a witness is unreliable, then impeachment of a witness must always follow. Because, Chair, the Cabinet Secretary is both criminally culpable. Why? Because they did say that they did not issue the license. But the problem is, because he owes the great people of Kenya a duty of care and became negligent, he ought to have followed up and known that this company that is not issued with the license to trade, why is it proceeding to trade? And he is also vicariously liable under the law of tort. And chair, our people are suffering. I was just showing my senate and my secretary general a photo of a young man, 14 year old, who passed on yesterday. If you look at those two photos, chair, the bodies haven't been removed from different hospitals, released from different hospitals. Bills are accumulating, both in public hospitals and private hospitals. Today, we've just organized for a prayer day to pray for these victims. And Chair, it is really a big shame if the Cabinet Secretary can leave this country, Kenya, in this state, going to another country, claiming that he wants to serve the interests of Kenyans, that is serving, while Kenyans are already dead and some are dying. Who does he want to go and get those interests for if Kenyans are all dead? Which population will he have? So Chair, it is a really sad state of affair to be here just because a cabinet secretary probably feels very important compared to other members here. Meanwhile, he doesn't have a democratic responsibility that is bestowed on us by the electorates. Otherwise, thank you. Point of order, Point of order Chair. You see, just a, just a minute, uh, youth leader. You see, this is part of a problem we have, that governors are creating impressions out there that we are friends. We are not friends. I have my responsibility as a senator of Nairobi to oversight the county government of Nairobi. That has nothing to do with friendship. I do not have the governor's itinerary. I don't know where he sleeps, where he wakes up, and where he travels to. He doesn't tell us. We also just see when Nembakasi happened, we heard that he was throwing a bash in South Africa for his, I don't know how, how many years he has done. At a certain age, you must stop celebrating. Shere has also a limit. You must work for the people. So I, 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 I object to that line of reasoning. And your HBCs and people attempting to pass the buck. I think it would uh, be a better use of our time as a committee if we have all these people in the room at once. I had my governor make a roadside declaration that all of those uh, installations have been shut down in Nairobi. We want to be able to confirm from him that that has actually happened. So I would propose that when we summon the CS for energy, we also make sure that the CEO for EPRA is written to individually to be present on that day. The Petroleum Institute of East Africa had a very interesting take on the matter. They have a lot of information that I think would be helpful for us in understanding uh, where some of these uh, unlicensed uh, gas operators might be located, the county government of Nairobi, and of course, uh, the National Environment Management Authority, because they are also uh, just passing the buck and blaming other institutions, yet they are all involved in licensing. By the time you are running such a facility, all these agencies must have given you a license at some point. So we would want that they are all in the room so that we, if, if we are going to find the people responsible, there is no blame game amongst them and we are able to reach at the, to the bottom of the matter. I thank you, Chair.